Don't pause. Press play. Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good dawn, guys. This is your boy Cyphrix. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Today we have something truly unique. We're looking at Kick Flight, a new mobile MOBA from Gringe Inc. I hope I said that right. Featuring full aerial combat in a 360 degree play field. This game is super unique both in its game rules and combat controls and oh my god is it as hard to learn as it is rewarding to win. Let's get started with the basics. This game has three types of matches. Scramble, a game similar to Capture the Flag where you must gather and keep crystals gathered by flying through the map. Free Flight, where you can just have some friendly matches with friends. And Ranked Flag, which unlocks an S rank and is of course Capture the Flag. Now being frank, the learning curve is a tad steep on this one. Being an aerial based game, it is not a click to move or joystick based type of combat. This uses a one handed approach with a vertical setup and five skill buttons at the bottom. At first I was not a fan of this setup, I either turn too fast or spam buttons too often. There are a ton of smaller nuanced things that you can do in this game to assure victory such as having a CC combo for assassinating crystal carriers or balancing your disc to match your character. At its core this game is a gotcha and it has a strong startup of 12 kickers. Kickers vary from speed types, tank types, snipers and so forth. There are even hybrids as well such as Kite, a mid-range ninja-esque character with a Rasengan spirit bomb ultimate. After your first match, you get some free gacha character summons to unlock other characters as well, so you have a few options to start with. You can customize each character with costumes, gear, and elemental based moves called discs, which are skills you can use in combat to attack enemies and support your team. The cool thing about these skills is that they summon a digital creature of sorts who does the attack for you. These skills can perform some serious CC if you use them right. Imagine summoning a manta ray to stun your opponent, using a board to tackle them to the ground, and then finishing them off with your ultimate. This style really complements the anime cel shaded aesthetic of the game. On that note, the graphics of this game are amazing, easily AAA quality for a mobile phone. The aerial flight effects, disc attacks, and character animations all contribute to a fun experience that can only be described as bright and refreshing. This honestly feels like it should be a Switch game or a PC port. Each character feels pretty fleshed out. They have surprising depth and uniqueness, and the bright colors, interesting outfits, and voice actors really bring you into the game. The characters really encourage you to find the right disc combo to bring out their true potential. Combat wise, Melee doesn't feel underpowered compared to range, despite this being a game where you think distance would have a supreme advantage. You have charges, pulls, and skill dodges and other tools to help even the playing field. The lock on camera helps quite a bit too. It feels like this was inspired by Zone of the Enders or Dragon Ball Z. That perfect over the shoulder aerial focus on your target as you zoom around at high speed. Okay, now that we got that part out the way, let's dig into the meat. Is this game pay to win? I can emphatically say I do not think it's pay to win. I do think it is pay to get ahead and get there really fast, but I can definitely say it doesn't feel pay to win. This game doesn't seem to be a fan of bots either. Games that rank B and above seem to actually wait for real players or else it simply just doesn't start. And that was super different, you know, coming from other games where just to keep the queue time under 20 to 30 seconds, they'll just shove like five or six bots in that end up losing, you know, losing the game for you. And since this is a team based game, you're hoping that everybody is a cognitive thinking human being, right? There's also no stamina or special energy of any type that I saw. They don't have like any kind of barrier to you getting extra rewards for fighting. It's just, hey, come and fight and get your gold, get your rewards and you're good to go. Now, I could be wrong on that. I could be blind as heck, but I didn't notice this over like the four or five days I've been playing this game. So I'm pretty sure it's a safe bet. You also get 20 free discs daily in sets of five. And I think it's like every so many hours you get them. There's also a daily 80% off capsule, but it's for jet coins that you specifically paid for. And I'll get to that in a second. You unlock better discs by raising your rank. You can't even get the top tier disc without being a proper rank. So there's no, I'm just gonna rush to the end of the game by dumping in $200. That's not gonna happen. Now on that topic, I did just wanna touch on the premium currency because there kinda isn't a premium currency in this game. There's either jet coins, which you can get by playing the game, or like the disc energy, which you can use to level up your discs, which you also get by playing the game. They do differentiate between jet coins that you've earned naturally and jet coins that you've paid for. And they actually mark this in the store where you buy kickers and you buy discs, which by the way are super affordable. You can get them either in sets of three for 300 or 32 for 3000, which is pretty good. As far as gameplay goes, it feels like you really have to think to win. You can't just abandon your target or your base and go mindlessly kill. This game really rewards people who think about what's best to do for their team at the time. Fail to consider your situation and you can wind up losing your game after having a huge point advantage. 
Lastly, this game is kind of difficult. I mentioned it before, it has a pretty steep learning curve, but don't let that keep you from trying it out and getting better. It's okay to be hot garbage when you start. My first few wins in this game were super satisfying because I took a few minutes to dig into the trial mode and really practice my skills and my flight. They even have a built-in replay feature where you can rewatch your recent matches from both first person and in a special augmented reality mode where you can place the entire map in front of you in AR and view any angle from the sky. AR view really makes you feel like you're some kind of announcer watching a championship game. It's super unique and something I hope they make as a live spectator mode for ranked games. And that's my two cents y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did or if you found it helpful, a like, subscribe would be very much appreciated. This is my secondary grind and I do my best to bring you guys quality information. Love, peace, and elevate your hunts y'all. Late.